President Yuri Andropov's death at age 69, only 15 months after he became party general secretary, and only six months after he became head of state, finds the regime largely unprepared for a new succession. Although Andropov had accumulated more personal power than any of his predecessors in a comparable period, his tenure was so brief and his absences from the job so lengthy that his regime will be known more for what it set in motion than for what it accomplished. The succession choice is not as clear-cut as it was after Brezhnev. Whoever is chosen, Andropov has left him the same unresolved economic, social, military, and foreign problems that confronted him. The remaining leaders in the Politburo will move quickly to select a new general secretary. Their choice will be ratified by a plenary meeting of the party central committee within a few days. This will be a tough decision to make. All the viable candidates for the top party post have significant liabilities. The issue seems to be whether to opt now for a younger, perhaps more vigorous and longer lasting leadership, or to choose a senior leader who will function as a transitional figure, thus, once again, avoiding a more profound change at the top. The evidence thus far suggests the leadership may have chosen the latter course. Soviet news has announced that 72-year-old Konstantin Chernenko will head the funeral commission. It's a strong indication that he's been selected to replace Andropov. Another possible, though somewhat less likely, explanation is that the leadership has not yet been able to decide on a successor. Andropov apparently was preparing Mikhail Gorbachev to be his successor. Gorbachev evidently was placed in charge of personnel appointments about six months after Andropov took over from Brezhnev, and he reportedly chaired secretariat meetings in the absence of Andropov. The Politburo's senior members, however, might find Gorbachev too young, at 52, to serve as leader over themselves. Moreover, with his background in agricultural management, he might not have the support of the important heavy industry, defense industrial, and military constituencies. Grigory Romanov, at 60, has had little visibility since becoming a party secretary, but he's probably perceived by the Politburo as more acceptable to those same constituencies. For example, he has had experience for more than a decade as a manager of a key regional party organization with strong ties to the industrial and military sector. Moreover, Romanov is an ideological conservative who has taken a harder line than many of his colleagues on foreign policy issues. In a time of troubles for the USSR at home and abroad, the Soviet leaders may now look to the more conservative candidate as the better choice. Romanov, however, has served only a short time as a national party secretary. Chernenko, now 72, has significant liabilities, including ill health. The strongest signal that Chernenko nevertheless remains an important factor in the leadership is the highlighting of his position as unofficial party second-in-command at the November 1983 anniversary ceremonies and in the December-January honorary nominations to the Supreme Soviet. If his health were to improve, he seems to have emphysema, Chernenko could be the choice of those in the Politburo who are reluctant or unable to choose among the other, more junior candidates for the job. He could also benefit from rivalries among some of the younger contenders who might prefer his selection rather than see the position go to a strong rival. The lack of ideal candidates in the Secretariat could lead the Politburo to turn to leaders outside, such as Dmitry Ustinov, even though such a course would be unprecedented, 
and despite his age and reported poor health. Ustinov has the advantages of past experience in the Secretariat and service in the important military sector. If he and the rest of the Politburo wanted to send a signal that things are under control while recognizing that only an interim choice has been made, they could pick Ustinov. Ustinov might have sufficient personal prestige and Politburo supporters to take the job regardless of the signal it sends. Of course, given his age, such a choice would lead almost inevitably to a more protracted and potentially more controversial succession. Viktor Grishin, whom Soviet officials had mentioned as a possible compromise candidate when Brezhnev was being replaced, could again become one. Located in Moscow, he has a definite political advantage over his regionally based colleagues. He too is handicapped by health problems, however, and he is not part of the Andropov coalition. Because the existing consensus on foreign policy is stronger than that on domestic issues, major changes are even less likely in that area. Besides, Foreign Minister Gromyko clearly played a major foreign policy role under Andropov, and his influence in this area is likely to continue. The commitment to sustain the global dimensions of Soviet policy will endure. The new leadership, however, may well wish to renew an arms control dialogue with the U.S. The price the regime is willing to pay for this will depend on the priorities the new leadership establishes and the degree of unity it can maintain in pursuing its goal. <laughs>